Lynx beef jerky production happens in the company's factories across the country. However, the same process is followed in each one. First, the factory workers unpack the beef gotten from the abattoir. The beef, freshly gotten from cows, has been cut into uniform chunks at the abattoir and rid of most of its fat content, but some fat is left to give the beef some flavor. Next, the beef is sorted and cleaned repeatedly to get rid of as much blood as possible before they are put into a mechanical slicer which cuts them into small thin strips which are no more than 5 millimeters thick. All the meat put into the slicer is cut into the same size, which is important so that they can retain flavor and be tender after being cooked. Afterward, the cut beef strips are put into a large container, which is moved by specific factory workers to the point where they are marinated. The marination process is not only done for flavor, but also to further increase tenderness. And the process takes place in a big mixing drum, which works and is shaped like a concrete mixer. The beef strips are loaded into the drum, and the ingredients that constitute the marinade are also added in. Some homemade jerky recipes add in the marinade before the meat is cut into strips, but this method used at Jack Link's factory ensures that the marinade really gets into the center of each strip of meat. The marinade is made up of liquid and powdered ingredients, which can vary depending on the beef jerky's flavor. However, the staple ingredients include soy sauce, brown sugar, salt, honey, pepper flakes, orange juice, grated ginger, red wine, garlic, etc. Once all the ingredients have been added, the mixed door is shut, and a factory worker sets it to rotate at a particular speed for at least an hour. When the beef strips are taken out of the mixer, they are drenched in the marinade, and rather than drain out the excess juice, the factory workers leave them to soak for another 30 minutes. After being marinated satisfactorily, the soaked beef strips are transferred into a large container and taken to the next production stage, which is smoking. Before the beef strips are taken into the smokehouse, a group of factory workers prepares them because this is one of the things that technology cannot do perfectly. This preparation involves arranging the beef strips on stainless steel rods, and the workers ensure that the strips are well arranged and spaced to allow for maximum air penetration, which is important for the beef to be properly cooked. Each rod holds about 30 beef strips, and when they're filled, each rod is placed on a rolling rack, accommodating 100 rods. Eventually, each rolling rack is taken into the smokehouse, where the beef strips are cooked for a time. The smokehouse works in a very special way, which is different from regular ovens. As a source of heat, wood chips are slowly burned, and the temperature of the smokehouse generally is no more than 82 degrees Celsius. This slow cooking allows the meat to tenderize, retain their flavor, and add in that smoky flavor as a bonus. Fun fact! The kind of wood burned in the smokehouse is determined by the flavor of the beef being roasted. For example, spicy flavored jerkies are roasted using mesquite wood, while hickory or apple wood is used to roast sweet jerkies like honey barbecue. The roasting process lasts about five to six hours, and at the end of the process, the meat strips come out completely cured, all thanks to the warm air which completely circulates each smokehouse. Once the cured beef strips are brought out of the oven, they are placed on conveyors, which move them from checkpoint to checkpoint, where a skilled technician observes them to see if any strips fall short of the company's requirements. First, their thickness is measured to see if they fall into 3 to 4 millimeter range. And finally, another group of technicians checks for taste and texture. If any strip is not properly cooked or tastes off, it's discarded along with the rest of the batch. However, thanks to the competent staff, that rarely happens. Another group of workers examines the length of the strips and ensures that they are about 7 centimeters long. After all these qualities have been checked, the approved strips are sent on to the next production stage, packaging. Before they are finally wrapped up and sealed in packs, the strips are conveyed to an automatic scale, where the right amount per pack is measured. While that happens, the packaging machine prepares the pouches in which the beef strips are placed. These preparations include printing the expiration date, installing a zipper, and filling each bag with nitrogen to displace oxygen. 
Oxygen is eliminated because it is one of the biggest agents that initiates food spoilage. For extra protection, another machine drops a pack of oxygen absorbers into each bag, and with that, they are ready to be packed with the pre-measured beef jerky. After the beef is placed inside the bags, they are sealed shut and a conveyor transports them to the boxing area. The packed jerkies are checked one last time by skilled technicians, whose job is to check the oxygen and nitrogen content of each pack. All these measures are taken to ensure that the jerky has a shelf life of about 15 months. Finally, they're boxed and shipped off to retail stores within and outside the country.